Dehancer reached out to me and asked me to create a tutorial and review of their plugin. Dehancer is a third-party plugin that allows you to achieve film-like color grades and film effects in various editing software such as DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut and Premiere Pro. I want to clarify that this video is not sponsored and they didn't pay me to make this video, so you can trust me that this review is my honest opinion. I actually purchased the Dehancer plugin myself even before they reached out to me. I've been using it for the last month or so on different projects and in my experience Dehancer is a fantastic tool for color grading artists and filmmakers of all skill levels. Its extensive library of negative film stocks and film print stocks provides a wide range of options to create countless looks. What sets Dehancer apart is its commitment to delivering an organic, natural and realistic film emulation. In my opinion it's currently one of the best third-party plugins on the market for achieving that authentic film effect. Plus it's user-friendly and comes with a comprehensive manual that explains each control's function. Not only does Dehancer provide an excellent plugin, but they also offer a blog with insightful articles on color grading and film emulation. This additional resource not only helps you to make the most out of Dehancer, but also educates you about the traditional analog process of shooting, processing and printing film. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Dehancer to create a popular cinematic Hollywood film look. I will briefly explain you how to use most of the controls and as a little bonus I have a little discount code down below if you decide to add Dehancer to your filmmaking toolkit. Although I'll be demonstrating the whole process inside of DaVinci Resolve but if you're using Final Cut or Premiere Pro you should also be able to follow along if you use the same settings inside of Dehancer. Alright so now we're here inside of DaVinci Resolve I just prepared a couple clips here you probably don't go through all the clips I just prepared them in case we are going to color grade the different ones or I just apply the same color grade to the other clips to see how it's going to look like so let's start with this daylight clip but before we go into color grading you have to change the color management inside of DaVinci Resolve if you haven't yet so for that go down here to the settings inside of DaVinci Resolve go to color management and I set my settings like this for almost every project. I set my color signs to DaVinci YRGB and I set the timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. This gives you the most flexibility when it comes down to color grading and the output color space is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 which is usually used for web export. If you have some weird gamma shifting or something like that, usually you have this on Mac computers, try to use Rec 709A. So if you apply these settings, you can go to save and then close this window. And then we switch to the color tab and the team from Dehancer actually provided a note tree which they prefer to get the best results. You can find it in the blog on their website. I'm also going to link it down below and I'm also going to show you on screen how this looks like. So the note tree basically starts with noise reduction, white balance, contrast, some custom masks, color space transform, dehancer and sharpen. So actually they tell you to color correct your image and do also the color space transform before dehancer and then add some modifications like sharpen and so on. My personal note tree is not really different from what they prefer but I'm going to show you my workflow and how I use it because I think this is a little bit faster to work on. So first of all I like to group my shots so I usually select all my notes down here which are shot on the same camera of course, right click on it and then add into new group and then label it. I already did this so you can see this little linking icon down here so I know they are in the same group. Alright so to explain this real quick usually you work on a clip level note tree which is this one here in the clip and what that means is everything you do inside that clip is only affecting that only one clip and not the whole group. Let's say if you're working on a group pre-clip everything you do here happens before the group so it will affect everything or everything inside the group as you can see if I add some blueness to the temperature it changes every single clip and if I want to get rid of it and I do it in the clip level base here you can see it just happened after the pre-clip and the post clip actually happens after the clip note tree to the group again. So I can bring it in more 
to the warm side but this will affect every single clip so i hope this was understandable i tried to explain it in the easiest way possible here for my understanding but if this was too complicated just feel free to ask me in the comments maybe i will do another video just about the grouping of the clips so now we start to build our notary first i usually start with the lift gamma gain so i call it lgg next one would be balance which means white balance you can also call it white balance if it's easier for you next one is contrast for me and after that i would actually add some curves some windows if you need some in your footage now we are going to add the last node which is going to be our dehancer node let's call it dehancer as well so we don't get confused also let me close down the clips here i have it on a shortcut but you can go up here on clips click it once and it's gone so you have more real estate to work with also we can actually open this up so we can see what's going on so first of all we have to bring the image to a rec 709 color space so we can work on it and see what's going on first we go to the group pre-clip and add a color space transform and our input color space is our camera so use whatever camera you used or the color space you know i use the sony a7s3 so i'm going to sony s gamut 3 cine and it was shot on sony s log 3. now i change the output color space to davinci white gamut and davinci intermediate as output gamma because we want to work inside this color space here so we bring it from sony s log 3 to davinci white gamut and at the end which means group post clip we are going to add another color space transform and our input color space is now davinci white gamut because this is what we transformed our clip into at the beginning in the pre-clip here so we are getting an input from davinci white gamut now and our output color space now is going to be rec 709 gamma 2.4 and there you go we have a clean color space transform this is what i usually do is to get the most out of the dynamic range of the camera traditionally you would add a color space transform here and just choose your camera and change it to rec 709 i like it to do it this way because now every single clip here in the group is transformed properly into that color space so when we bypass this you can see this was lock and now it's rec 709 for us so we can see what's going on all right so let's start with the lift gamma gain this means here lift gamma gain inside the color wheels usually i use these wheels here and also the log wheels sometimes to add some more contrast so usually i pull out the scopes here so i can see what's going on let me pull this over here so you can see it and now i just start to pull down the lift probably go down with the gains a little bit because we want to have a little bit of details in the sky then we push up the gamma pull down the lift again just like so until we get a good image so it's actually a push and pull every time you do it if you already did this a lot you know what you're doing and with you have to pull around there's no right or wrong it's just how you express yourself here in the wheels so let's see we can also go like darker like this but i think i'm gonna leave it around here it's not too bad before and after now we go to the white balance node and I like to add some warmness here. Usually I use the temperature or the offset wheel depending on what footage I have and what works better. So it's not only a one size fits all. Sometimes I like to use the offset more because there's more than just the temperature I want to change. And sometimes I just change the temperature and tint here. Uh, for this one it works now i like to add some contrast so if you use the contrast here in the color wheels you are going to change the color as well but if you go to the hdr panel here and change this contrast you won't affect the colors but i actually like that here for this clip so i'm going to pull this contrast slider here and i just keep an eye on the waveform so i'm not clipping but actually up here we are almost clipping so it's kind of hard because we're shooting against the sun so let's see before and after adding some contrast here now i like to add a curve i like to delink it and only work on the luminance curve so let's pull it up and pull it down here to add even more contrast maybe pull up the 
mid-tones actually I think like this is not so bad for this clip add a little bit of a fade down there maybe pull down the highlights this doesn't look too bad so I just flying through here so you can see the dehancer tool actually what it does usually I would just go to the other clips and middle mouse button to apply the same color grade to the other clips and from there on I would just adjust the clips I like this one to be very dark because I want to see the sky here so let's go down a little bit more maybe here as well like this and now you can actually use windows here to get some more details from the clouds so let's try to get that here else soft I'm gonna up this and now I press shift H so you can see what I'm picking and then I would just turn down the highlights a little bit just to get some highlights here from the sky next one is this clip this should be okay I think maybe a little bit dark yeah we just go up here with the exposure and last clip is going to be a little bit darker just like so all right let's go back to our first clip let's close this again and now add our dehancer tool from the effects library if you don't have this go to effects up here and then just drag and drop the plugin inside our prepared node at first it looks very <laughs> terrible or it has a special look to it so we're gonna get rid of that so we're going to disable everything here before we start that's it. and as a tip you can collapse all these tabs here by holding down alt and clicking on one of these arrows and now it's all collapsed so first of all we start with the input and as you remember we work in a davinci wide gamut intermediate color space so i'm going to choose that one but let's say you work in a normal color space how you maybe learned it you usually have your cst here your camera everything to rec 709 then you have to change this to rec 709 as well this also acts like a color space transform as well if you want to do that so let me just disable these two and you can just choose your camera here again i go to sony most of the cameras are here already so alpha 7s 3 select and then it was s gamut cine iso 640 and as you can see it does the same job but as I told you, I want to work in the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space to get most of the dynamic range. So I'm gonna choose that one. Let me close this again. And now we start with the film. As you can see, we got a lot of film prints in here. And yeah, it's a lot. And I'm not the most technical guy when it comes down to film print. So I cannot explain every single profile we got here but I'm going to show you how you can apply the most popular ones which are used in Hollywood movies usually mostly and these are the Kodak Vision 3 series so to not totally confuse you we have four different profiles here the D stands for daylight and T stands for tungsten and the 50D here is for day exterior which would fit perfectly to our shot here the 500T is for low light shots doesn't matter if it's daylight or nighttime the 250D is for day interior which means window light if you're inside somewhere and don't have artificial light going on and the 200T is for well lit studios all right so we choose the 50D here for this one and don't forget to enable it and as you can see it just added this film look to our footage immediately now you can also push and pull here if you're into like film stocks you know probably what push and pull is I think this is for developing the film longer or shorter when you pull around you can see our image changes so you can also take your eyes and see what fits better for your image I will just leave it like that for now. Now we're going to uh, the next tab. Actually, they built this chronologically. So you go from top to bottom as we go here. In the film developer, let me enable this. We can add some contrast, which I actually like to do sometimes. Something like this is not bad. Uh, gamma correction, you can add some push here and add some contrast here. It's not just only lifting your exposure. As you can see down in the waveform so i think i'm gonna add a little bit of gamma correction here so color separation i will leave it at 100 usually i will leave it like that color boost is like saturation so if you pull it up to the right 
is going to add a lot of unpleasant colors to your image so maybe add a little bit of it because the image is still a little bit pale from my taste let's close this one go to the film compression now and enable this one and as you can see the sky got a lot less bright this is going to compress your highlights here in the waveform you can see it perfectly because film doesn't have that much of a dynamic range like our digital cameras nowadays with the impact slider this acts like an opacity so if you go down it will have zero impact as it says impact enable and disable it and you see nothing changes so this is like an opacity slider you can also change the white point until where it's going to compress so we'll leave this and this is also the range of the whole compression and now you can add some color density to the highlights we just adjusted so i will leave it like this doesn't look too bad we got a little bit of details back in the sky there now we go to the next one which is expand and here you can expand the white and the black points to get more dynamic range out of your image so let's just pull this a little bit down and the white point a little bit up and pull this a little bit more downwards to here before and after i like this pop it was a little bit too dark so now we go to print so this one is going to be interesting because we are going to print our film and usually hollywood films use kodak 2383 print film you will hear a lot of this if you're getting into film stock so we are going to use the same as well so let's enable it and see what's going on and as you can see this impacts the image a lot you can also go with the other ones if you like it more but the Kodak 2383 print film is the most popular so we're going to stick with that one as well it just added a lot of contrast to it we can also use the analog range limiter which is going to bring it back where it was kinda to not have a big of a contrast like this so I'm going to enable it here for this one now we can also change the exposure again but I wouldn't do it here I would actually go in here in the node and change it there we can also change the white balance the color density again and saturation color density works like color boost a little bit it's not like saturation so let's add a little bit of color density like that maybe go back with the contrast here because it's too much let's see what it does and now it looks good i think in my opinion i really like these colors let's also pull out our vector scope here so you can see it just settled in in that orange and teal kind of look here just perfectly maybe it's a little bit more blue i think this is a vignetting from my nd filter probably because I was stacking it back then. This is an old clip. All right, let's jump to the next one, which is color head. And this one is a little bit more difficult to explain. I think this one almost works like the temperature sliders, the tint sliders and sign and red sliders. So I usually actually like to play around with it to see what matches better to my footage. So I'm not going full ham here. I try to keep it subtle this one doesn't look too bad so let's see before and after it's not too much just a subtle amount i think it's a little bit too green i like these magenta shifts a little bit here in the shadows these tones here you can also play around to see what matches better which tones should be more like dominant and i like to have a little bit of color separation so probably gonna do it something like this so let's see before and after just a subtle change i usually don't play too much around here with the color head but yeah you can see what you can do here i would just play around it's not something scientific this is what i would do next one is going to be film grain and the film grain here is just on another level than the usual davinci resolve grain so usually you can add grain here with the built-in film grain but this will just add in kind of overlay to your image or to your footage and inside of Dehancer they use a algorithm which kind of analyzes your footage and adds some grain like that and you can also control where the grain is going to be here in the shadows midtones or highlights you can take some away you can add some so let's enable it and this is a lot here already so let me pull down the amount so this is the slightest amount we can get but if this is too much for you still you can also change from negative to positive this is a lot less so maybe let's go from here and now we can 
for example take it away from the midtones this is a proxy file of course this is why the resolution is so low so this one is the original now as you can see it looks a lot better so we can see what's going on you can also take away the grain in the shadows and you see it immediately disappears there so you can do a lot here with this film grain plugin let's see before and after it doesn't look too bad out of the box actually like this and if you pull down the amount a little bit so there are tons of ways to add grain to your image but i think i'm going to leave it like this this doesn't look too bad then we jump to halation and halation is great i also like to add halation to some of my clips some people already asked me how you get this um, halation look if you don't know what halation is it's actually this red color shift here if you have a lot of highlights going on especially if you shoot against the sun you will see that so let me show you how it looks like so this is an extreme halation here and it kind of looks cool probably i'm going to dial it down a little bit and we can also add some global diffusion so global diffusion will just affect your whole image but the local diffusion is going to add some halation to the highlights you have and you can also limit it, it which means the source limiter acts like a mask so you can see it's only going to affect highlights and if you go up the higher the number the less highlights it, it's going to affect it's like the luminance picker here the higher you go the less highlights is going to cover from dark to bright so this is how the source limiter works maybe i'm gonna add some more global diffusion here a little bit of course you can also change the hue to more orange or greenish looking or to more red looking you can also affect the impact again so i like this halation you can also change to mask mode if this is suits better for you as you can see we got a little bit of reds here wrapping around and not too much and if you go up with the or down with the source slider you can see more highlights are visible in our mask so it's wrapping a lot more around me than this here so i will leave it like this look good to me and now we're gonna add some bloom and bloom here is also this looks a lot better than the bloom we get in davinci resolve you can also add some glow here but it's also not the same like inside the dehancer tool i actually used bloom on some of my footage which i didn't have a mist filter on and people told me or asked me what mist filter i used so it's really subtle it just looks amazing so it looks like a real mist filter even though you don't have one on so let's just enable it and out of the box it already looks very very good in my opinion also here you can change all the sliders here you can also again change the source limiter to make it more or less dominant you can also add diffusion and take away diffusion and as you can see you can do so many different settings here or adjustments but i really like it how it looks like out of the box again you can go into mask mode unfortunately i don't see too much here so and yeah this is how i would use a dehancer let's see before and after and as you can see this just changes the image and it looks so much better really filmic looking i really like it also you have this monitoring here i forgot to tell you about it you can enable false color if you work with false color like i do i usually use it on my external camera monitor so you can see if your skin tones are right if you're exposing right if you're not sure about your exposure because exposing a lot can be quite difficult sometimes so you can see the ire in every segment of your footage so i really like to use false color on my shoots and you can also use the clipping indication which is for example here if you go down with the black points you can see everywhere where it's blue you will lose details and it's clipping here on our waveform the same with white points it's going to indicate red you can see we're clipping up here so this is also a grid tool to see if you're clipping or not i mean color grading is so individual so it's not wrong to clip something in a lot of popular movies also the highlights are clipped the blacks are clipped so no worry about that this is just something which can help you to see if something is clipping or not because sometimes your eyes get confused now you can also go back to your curves or so and 
adjust the colors if you want let's say this is too blue so i want more teal so i just add some teal here in the hue versus hue curves also if you want to build like a different look here you can also add some uh, blue tones here in lift gamma add some warmness and as you can see we go into a different direction here which also doesn't look too bad if you ask me so you can develop your look out here but this already gives you a very good look all right so let's apply it to our other clips as well so now i don't want to change everything and just apply this here because we did some uh, custom curves differently than here so i just go to dehancer Control c and Control v and now we have it here in this clip as well and this is our change probably i go back to the balance here Make it more cold, go back to Dehancer and add some color density here because this one is more pale. Also add a color boost. Yeah, I like this. Before and after. Let's pull out our vector scope again. The colors are all over the place and now it's settled down here to the orange and teal look. You can also go to the balance. Usually I would do it here, add some saturation if you want to or add some color boost, just like so jump to the next one Oop. and it's very easy to use it so you can use it here on every single image maybe here we should change to the codec vision to 50d which is for low light and i think this looks even better here so sometimes you just have to play around until you find a pleasing one so i think i would leave it like this maybe even add some exposure like so yeah, this doesn't look too bad. I really like this imagery. This looks a lot more filmic, right? I hope you agree with me. I just want to add the dehancer here. Also, this one, I take the 250D from here. And yeah, I already like this out of the box. We get a lot more pushed images here. I really like this blue skies here and the red sunset. And also the blue foreground. Yeah, I would leave it like this. This looks very, very good. Yeah, this is how I would use Dehancer and also, of course, I would add a noise reduction node beforehand. Create a node prior like I did, just hold down shift and press S so you get a node before. Now I would go in here, I would actually disable Dehancer first because we added some grain and also disable proxies so we can see the image. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see this on YouTube, but I'm going to add a noise reduction here, which is down here, this symbol. Go to frames, about 3 is good, better. Let's pull this until we see it's pretty smooth here. I also like to delink this and add some chroma. So let's see if we can see it. I hope you see it on YouTube, I really like this. Nice reduction, this looks perfectly fine. And then add Dehancer to it and that's it. Here's the result guys. So I hope this video was informative for you. If you have any further questions, please let me know down below in the comments. And also let me know if you're using Dehancer already or if you're planning to use this plugin. And until then, here's maybe a video you want to watch next. And I will hopefully see you in the next one.